Okay, on to unit one, section six. I will tell you this is a difficult section. Um, we're gonna do our best to get through it and you may not always get the right answer every time. What I want you to do is not give up. You're gonna keep trying, you're gonna keep attempting these problems and we're gonna keep practicing them, okay? This is literal equations. And when I say literal equations, it means we're gonna be dealing a lot with lots of different letters, okay? We're still gonna go through the steps that we've been doing when we dealt with numbers, but now we're gonna deal with letters. And for some of you, this is gonna be very abstract and take a lot of practice. And that's okay, that's the way it goes. Sometimes we need to, I need to practice more at sports, I'm not very good at sports, but I need to practice and I can, I can get there. You can get there. What I am gonna ask you to do is not to get frustrated, okay? So here's the first problem is 4xy equals z. Now, when I give you a problem that has more than one letter in it, I also have to tell you what I want you to solve for. In other words, which letter do I want by itself? And in this case, I want you to solve for y. So when I see that, and you might want to do this, you don't have to, I really like color coding if you haven't figured it out. I'm gonna color code the letter that I need alone. And in this case, it's my y. My y needs to be by itself. It's an equation, so I'm gonna draw a line down the center so I know what's going on. And I'm gonna go through my normal steps. My first step, number one. Are there any, is there anything that needs to be distributed? And is there any denominators that need to be cleared? And in this case, the answer is neither. Okay, good, moving on. So we've already gone through one step, but you have to think through these. You have to stop and think. And for some of you, you still need to write them out. And for some of you, you'll need to write them out for a long time because that's the way your brain works. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way your brain works. And trying to take shortcuts is just going to frustrate you. The second step is to see if there's any, anything that can be put together or simplified. When we have a four, we have an X, we have a Y, we have a Z, none of those we don't know anything about. So we can't simplify either side. Then I'm gonna deal with any addition or subtraction. Well, if you notice in this problem, there is no addition or subtraction. The only thing there is is multiplication. Really what this means is four times X times Y equals Z. Now, there are ways to do this longer. I'm gonna show you that we can do this really almost this is a one-step problem. Let's go through what we think. What's crowding the Y? Well, the four X. What's going on? Multiplication, what's the opposite operation? Division. Well, what two things, what do we want to divide off of that Y? What do we want gone? We want the four and the X. So we're gonna divide both sides by the four and the X at the same time. You're allowed to do that. Okay, now let's think, what does that mean? What is four divided by four equal? And I hope you're saying one, because that's the reason we did that. And what's X divided by X equal? And again, I hope you're saying one, because that's why we did this, okay? We did that to get rid of the four X, we did it to the other side to keep our equation balanced. So what's left on the left side of the equation? is a Y. Oh, great, well, we already have Y by itself. Now, this is where people get upset. They want a number answer. I'm with you, I want an answer for everything we do. That's not always the way it works in life and in math. Until someone tells you what number Z is, and what number X is, we can't do anything more with this because we don't know what Z divided by four is because we don't know what Z is. And we don't know what four times X is because we don't know what X is. And so our final answer is just, Ooh, let's not do it in red, let's do it in blue. Is Z divided by four X? Until someone comes along and tells us what Z and X is, that's all there is to it. That's all you can do. And so some people actually find these problems easy because there's not a lot of arithmetic to do. If you like doing arithmetic, these may not be the easiest things for you. And that's okay. As, we've, as we're learning, some things are easier for some people and some are more difficult. So we're done with that one, okay? Again, nothing new here. It just feels different because it's abstract and we're not getting real numbers. We're not getting numbers that mean anything to us. And so this is the true test of how well are we thinking algebraically? And we have to keep practicing this, okay? All right, step number two. Number two is u equals negative three plus two x. Again, if there's two letters in a problem, you can do nothing until I tell you what to solve for. 
I know you're all hoping I'm going to say solve for you because it's already by itself. So of course I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say we're going to solve for x. Okay. Again, I'm going to color code the x so I know what is kind of the problem that needs to be by itself. And it's our big red x. I'm going to draw my line like I always do. I'm going to go through my steps. Step one, anything to be distributed? Nope. Any denominators to deal with? No. Step two, is there anything that can be simplified before we start moving things from one side of the equation to the other? The answer there is no. Step three, is there any multiplying or adding or subtracting that we can do to help get the letter by itself? Yes. Again, we have a three on the right side with the two x. So that three is going to be dealt with first, but it's not just a three, it's a negative three. So if it's a negative three, we're gonna add a three to make it a zero. If I add a three to one side, add a three to the other. I hope you said that, or at least thought that. So now we have on the left side, now don't write three u. That's not what's going on here. We're saying we have u and we're adding three more to the u. Do we have any idea what that number is? Not until someone tells me what u is. So we just leave it as u plus three. Could you write it as three plus u? Absolutely. The reason, addition is commutative, which means we can switch the order and it'll get you the same answer. All right, so we have a u plus three over there. We don't know what that number is, so don't try to put those two together. And don't try to make it three u, that's multiplication. We didn't do any multiplying there, we did addition. So you gotta really think through what you're doing, okay? All right, so then we have a 2x on this side. Now again, you can put the plus in front of it if you want. I'm not going to because we're not used to seeing it that way. All right, so we dealt with the adding of subtracting of what was crowding the variable. Now we have to deal with the multiplying and dividing crowding the variable. In this case, it's a 2. How do I get rid of a 2 times an x? I divide both sides by 2. Oop, let's do that in a different color. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I'm going to see if there's anything I can do. Well, do I know what u divided by 2 equals? No. Do I know what 3 divided by 2 equals? Well, I could say 1.5 if I want it. So you could write u over 2 plus 1.5 equals x. Or you could leave it as u plus 3 all over 2 equals x. Or if you did, you could even write it as u over 2 plus 3 over 2 equals x. These all mean the same thing. So any of those answers are correct. Again, until someone tells us what u is, we can't add 3 to it because we don't know what u is. It could be a million, it could be 2. So until we know that, we can't add the 3. And, and because we can't add the 3, we can't divide by the 2 until we get a number. So that's why we are done at this step. Again, it's kind of up to you which way you like to write the answer. If it was a, multi, um, if it was a multiple choice test, you would just see which one they had as a choice. Okay? Um, let's try one more for the sake of time. We may need to do a little bit more in class tomorrow, but I don't want to make my videos so long. So we have P minus X equals Q plus M. Now there's all letters here, so I have to tell you something. So in this case, I'm going to have you, we're going to solve for X again. So I'm going to make my X red. Now this one, I did this one on purpose and I want you to watch carefully why I did. Again, I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to go through my steps. There's no parentheses. Don't have to deal with distributing. There's nothing in the denominator. Don't have to deal with that. Second step. Well, they're all letters, so we can't put them together in any way. Third step. I'm going to deal with any adding or subtracting. Okay, what letter wants to be alone? It's the X. What's over there with it? It's the P. Now be very careful. Look in front of the P for the sign. What's in front of the P? Well, there's nothing there, so what is it? It's a positive P. This negative goes with the X, and we're gonna deal with that in a minute, okay? So I'm gonna subtract P from both sides. Now, I don't like this because there's no place to line that P up because there's, it doesn't go with Q, it doesn't go with M. We aren't multiplying, we're subtracting. So really what we're left with is negative x equals, and it doesn't really matter what order you put these in, q plus m minus p. OK? 
okay? Because we don't know what Q, we don't know what M is, so we can't add or put them together or multiply. There's nothing we can do with them. They just have to stay there. Now, here's where I'll see people do this, and they stop here, and they think they're done. You solve for negative X. You're supposed to solve for X. So remember, there's an invisible one in front of here. It happens to be negative. So how do I get rid of that negative one that's being multiplied by the X? We're going to divide everything by negative one. Okay, and so my final answer here, when I simplify this, well, negative one over negative one goes away, so we get x by itself. Q over negative one. Well, any number divided by a negative is gonna make that negative, so that's gonna be a negative Q. M divided by negative is negative M. Now we have a negative P divided by negative one. That's gonna be a positive P. Now some of you will pick up on that really quickly and some of you might need to go back and listen to that again. I went through that very quickly. But the cool thing about it is a video. Pause it, go back and listen to it again. Try it a second time, see if you understand what I'm saying. If not, that's okay, I'm gonna help you tomorrow. Now, like I've been doing, and I kinda like doing this, I'm gonna give you two challenge problems to try on your own. Now if you already feel like your brain is saturated, at least try something but please don't spend hours on this. X over Y equals P plus M. And I want you to solve for Y. This one's, a, this one's a tough one, okay? And the answer to this one is Y equals X over P plus M. See if you can get that. If you can, it's okay. This is a really tough problem. Um, and then let's try number five. And number five is X over Y equals a over b and you're going to solve for a now some of you are going to see this very quickly and you're going to say that was easy and some of you are going to try it and you're going to say it's very hard it depends on the person right so the answer here is a equals x times b over y see what you could do with with one of them or both of them